In this video, we are going to be going through two different methods of sorting. Sorting is important in programming for the same reason it is in real life. It's much easier to locate items on a sorted list as opposed to an unsorted list. Sorting algorithms can be used in a program to sort for later searching or writing out to an ordered file or report. There are many sorting methods out there, of course, but we're going to be focusing on the bubble and selection sorting method today. Due to their simplicity, Starting off by learning these two sorting methods is great for introductory computer science students that have just ventured into the world of sorting. During a bubble sort, the CPU bubbles the smallest values to the beginning of the array through swapping. For each pass made by the CPU, elements are swapped so that the smaller value appears first. By the end of the sort, the elements in the array are sorted into ascending order. Here are the numbers unsorted in the array. Above the numbers are the indices for each element. Firstly, the CPU will check the first two indices in the array. It checks to see if 7 is greater than 11. In this case, 7 is not greater than 11, so the CPU, or bubble in this case, moves on to the next two indices. Now, the CPU checks if 11 is greater than 3, so 11 and 3 switch places. It then moves again to the next two indices. The CPU now checks 11 and 22. Pause the video and guess what happens. If you said 11 is not greater than 22, so the bubble moves on again, then you were right. This time, 22 is being compared to 12. Take one moment to pause the video and guess what happens. In this case, 22 is greater than 12. So if you said 22 and 12 swap places, then you were correct. Now the CPU compares 22 and 17. 22 is greater than 17, so they swap places. The CPU, or bubble, has now gone through all the indices in the array. But there's a problem. The list still isn't sorted in ascending order. That's because the CPU hasn't finished its work yet. The CPU keeps going through the list for as many times needed to fully sort it out. The bubble reforms around the first two numbers and compares them once again. With your current knowledge, now you should know that the two numbers 7 and 3 will swap, because 7 is greater than 3. The CPU continues to run through the rest of the list, comparing the next two numbers of the list each time. You're probably looking at the list right now and seeing that it's already in order. The CPU also sees this when it goes through the array one last time and sees that no swaps are to be made. This tells the CPU that the array is sorted in ascending order. A selection sort works by starting at the beginning of the array at index 0. Based on whether it is being sorted in ascending or descending order, you set the first element to the smallest or largest number. For this example, let's say we are sorting in ascending order. After setting the number at the first index to the smallest number, you move one index down the array every time comparing the first number to the next number. If a number is found that is smaller than the first number in the array, you set that number to be the smallest number. Since you have a new smallest number, you keep moving down the array by now comparing the other indices value to your new smallest number. You continue this process until you reach the end of the array. By this point, you would have the smallest number. The smallest number has to be at the start of the array, so you swap its location with whatever number is occupying index 0. You continue this process, moving one index down each time, until you reach the very end of the array, as all the numbers will be sorted by then. Here we have the unsorted array that is desired to be sorted in ascending order. We start at the beginning of the array and set it to the smallest number. Therefore, 7 becomes our new smallest number. We then move one index down the array to compare 7 with 11 to see which number is smaller. Since 7 is smaller than 11, it remains the smallest number. We then move down one more index, index 2, to get the value 3. We now compare 7 and 3 to see which number is smaller. Since 3 is smaller than 7, 3 is now set to the smallest number. We continue moving down the array, comparing 3 with all the numbers. Since 3 is smaller than 22, 12, and 17, by the time we are at the end of the array, 3 still remains the smallest number. Since 3 is the smallest number in the array, we want to put it at the very beginning. 
We do this by swapping its location with the number at the beginning of the array, 7. So we swap the location of 7 and 3. The new array would look like this. Since we now have the smallest number in the first spot of the array, we move one index down, so we start at index 1. We set 11 to the smallest number, as it is the first number in the array. We then move down one index and get the number 7. We compare 11 and 7 to see which is smaller. Since 7 is smaller, it becomes the new smallest number. We then continue to move down the array, comparing the rest of the numbers with 7. Since 7 is smaller than 22, 12, and 17, by the time we are at the end of the array, 7 is still the smallest number, except for 3, which we aren't comparing it to because we already found it was the smallest number in the entire array and moved it to the first spot in the array. We now want to put 7 one index after 3, because 7 is the second smallest number in the array. We do this by swapping its location with the number beside 3, or at index 1. Therefore, we swap the location of 11 and 7. The new array would look like this. We now have the two smallest numbers in the array in the right spots, at indices 0 and 1. Therefore, we will start searching for the smallest number after them, at index 2. We start by setting 11 to the smallest number, and then moving down one index to get the value 22. We compare 11 and 22 to see which number is smaller. Since 11 is smaller, it remains the smallest number. We continue moving down the array, comparing numbers to 11, but since 11 is smaller than the other values, 12 and 17, it remains the smallest number. Because the first two numbers are already sorted, we want the next smallest numbers to come after them, at index 2. Since 11 was the smallest number, we want it to be in index 2. This means we don't want to swap any numbers because 11 is already in index 2. Therefore, after this search, the array would stay the same. We now have the three smallest numbers in the right spots, at indices 0, 1, and 2, so we will start searching for the smallest number after them, at index 3. We start by setting 22 to the smallest number, and then moving down one index to get the value 12. We compare 22 and 12 to see which number is smaller. Since 12 is smaller, it remains the smallest number. We continue moving down the array to get the number 17. Since 12 is smaller than 17, we are now at the end of the array. 12 is the smallest number and the remaining unsorted numbers. Since the first three numbers are already sorted, we want the fourth smallest number at index 3. Since 22 is in index 3, we swap 22 and 12's location to put 12 in the red spot. We now have 4 out of the 6 of the numbers in the array sorted in ascending order. We are now going to start searching for the smallest number from the index 4. We start by setting 22 to the smallest number, and then moving down one index to get the value 17. We compare 22 and 17 to see which number is smaller. Since 17 is smaller, it becomes the smallest number in the remaining unsorted numbers, so we want to move 17 to index 4. Since 22 is occupying index 4, we swap 22 and 17's location, so 17 takes index 4 and 22 takes index 5. Now we have successfully gone through the entire array one by one, finding the smallest number each time. We are now at the very end with only one number left, and as you can see, our array is completely sorted.